Hello and welcome to the Bowling University studio from the International Bowling Campus in Arlington, Texas. This is The Profit Break. If you're joining us for the first time, we're glad you're here. Give us 15 minutes and you'll be well on your way to improving yourself and your profitability. Today, we're going to continue our discussion on group events. Market it, planned, and executed properly, group events can be an incredible source of income for our industry. In part one, we discussed how to get your center, be it traditional or entertainment venue, noticed in your community. So you got noticed, now what? All right, to help us answer that question, we welcome back Mr. Bob Pakanowski. Bob will talk, take us through some strategies and ideas that he has developed in over his 7,000 events that he has hosted. And you can use the, these events to make sure that your event is successful. Okay, so Bob, welcome back again. Thanks for joining us for part two. Thanks, John. Thanks for having me back for part two. I'm looking forward to it. So, so let's start off the first question with a question within a question. So we've done we've done all the marketing. We've you've done everything, and and uh, we've got somebody that wants to book an event with us. Now what? Well, you know, now is is where we really start building that loyalty and building that revenue. That's what my seminars are about on how to book these company events. We want to build loyalty and, and also revenue. And I think for for us. We were all about systems. I'm, I'm a big systems guy, and we needed to make sure that we had all the systems in place to make it seamless for our customers to do business with us. So, you know, they said yes. That, oh, that's great, but now what? Well, I, I think there's two key uh, items that, that, you know, we must send out right away. Number one is the contract, right? I mean, companies sign contracts all the time. So make sure that you have a contract for them. And make sure that it's been reviewed by a, a, a lawyer um, because you want to make it a win-win for both you and your client. So that's the first thing is, is get that contract out because that makes you look professional right away. Here's the second one is send out an invoice and ask for a deposit, right? You need to buy things for this event, food, whatever, and the minimum I would recommend is a 25% deposit. Some companies go as high as 50%. Um, and so get those in because that because both of these now lock in that date and time, not only for you but for the company. Um, and it and 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 now you know that you've got this booking for that date. So once that's done, and now you're moving towards it about seven to 14 days, some companies differ, make sure you send out that final invoice um, and that that and that and check or that or that invoice is paid in full before your a client walks in your center, right? Because, you know, let's face it, there's nothing you can, um, you give back to them. You can't give back food or bar that they consumed. Mm -hmm. You can't give back the bowling, whatever it is. But again, companies are used to this. So those are the first two that I think are critical. And again, that's part of the systems that you need to have in place to do company events. Love that term, systems. It's all about the systems you have in place if it's going to run like clockwork. So we got a contract, we've got an invoice that we send out for a deposit, and then we've got the final payment, which is laid out in the contract when it's due. So is there another document that is just as important, if not more so? You know, there is, and it's called the BEO, those are the three letters, BEO, and it stands for Banquet Event Order. Now, this is a term commonly used in the hotel industry, in the conference center industry. I mean, you know, I can't even imagine how many BEOs Bowl Expo has, John. It, it, there, there, there must be dozens upon dozens. But here's what this does, is this is that, that, that system uh, again, that that or that when you work with your client, you're going to get all that information on this BEO. And and here's a cop. I mean, here's just something that I have here that I've created, and I will send you this um, at no cost to you. Just email me, and you'll see my email up at the end. Um, and and it's yours. But here's what it does. It it. It, it, it gives all the information. What time is the event from? Because that's crucial. What, what time will the food come out? What is the food? What's the bar? How many lanes of, of bowling? Is there a, a, another activity like a laser tag or arcade, whatever it is? 
all those have to be on this BEO. And then here's the key, is that once you get it all done, you send it to your client for their signature. You sign it, they sign it. They send it back to you. So now you have it in writing. So now they know that you know all the details about their event. And let's say a week before or two weeks before the event, they say, hey, Bob, um, boy, our guest count changed from 50 to 70, or we wanna change this food item from this to that. Great, I'll put it on the new BEO. Uh, I'll send it back to you, sign it, get it back to me so that we have the most latest version. But this, but this piece of, of paper, which is a system, John, makes your center legit in the eyes of companies because now they know that you're taking their events seriously because you have all the details ready to go. Let me ask you a follow-up about the BEO. Uh, in, in the last, uh, in part one, we talked about the importance of your team and your staff when people are, you know, come to your center, that you have, they know what's going on. What do you recommend uh, the management does with the BEO when it comes to communicating with the staff? Because, for instance, if you've got food, you've got laser tag, you've got bowling, how do you make sure everybody is on the same page? That's a great question, and my answer is they get a copy of it as well. You know, maybe and maybe there's a maybe there's a uh, copy that's revised because maybe the pricing isn't on it. But uh, they need a copy of all those details, and it should be talked about in your pre-shift meeting. Mm -hmm. You know that huddle five seven minute meeting before the event starts, so that they have a copy of the BEO. They uh, they can read it. They know what time everything starts because both you and I know, John they're gonna get questions. What time's dinner? Right. What's on the menu? Your people need to know that. So please make sure they have a copy of that BEO as well. Yep. Good point. And that sets up your team for success when they know what's going on. There's nothing worse than being asked something like that. What time is dinner? It's like, uh, I don't know. It's, it's right. not a comfortable feeling. So, all right, so let's move on a little bit. I've heard you speak many times uh, and I know that you're a proponent of uh, all-inclusive packages for, for company mm -hmm. events. Um, can you share with us why that is and what should be included? Yeah, I, you know, John, I am. It, because of one simple reason, it makes it really easy for them. It, you think about what I said in part one. You're maybe one of four, five, six companies that they're looking at for their company event. Well, think about this. You have someone now who's overworked um, they're doing four or five different jobs. Now they have to plan this event. They don't have time to plan this event, right? But they have to do it. So now they get, um, you know, a menu A from a museum and, you know, proposal B from a go-kart track. And it's all inclusive. It's, it's one price per guest. And then they get this package from, uh, from you that's got pricing a la carte, food, bar, bowling, shoes, whatever it is. Now, yours may be less expensive, but in the eyes of them, they're, or they're not looking at it. They don't want to add it up. So mm -hmm. create these all-inclusive packages. So now you can say, oh, you know what? Here's package A, package B, and package C. I always did three packages. Just start out with one if you need to, but try to do three because you just have a low, middle, and a high. And the middle one is probably going to be the one that, that they're going to choose. For us, we called it silver, gold, platinum. And probably 50% of the time it was gold, about 40% of the time was silver, and 10% of the time was platinum. But what I heard from companies was this. Oh, my gosh, Bob, you and your team make it so easy. Mm -hmm. Everything's right here, right? Yes, plus tax and service charge. Well, Bob, what if I want to add a top shelf bar. Great, we can do that for you. But what if I want to add lighting? Great, we can do that for you. But you know what, John, you can come to our center and you can take this package and everything's included. So you don't have to worry about any of the other details. So if you can, folks, try to put together these packages because they do work. It, it takes a little bit of time to put them together. But once you have it, you will see how easy it is for companies to respond to you. You know, I think you mentioned a key word there, those meeting planners, you're looking for easy. So my experience, make it, make sure it's fun, make it easy for me, and make me look good to my boss and my peers. 
So, uh, great, great point. Thank you for that. So, let's, you, we're talking about packages. Now, sometimes it's really difficult, especially if, if you're relatively new or you're setting up a system, and how do you price out a package? And it's kind of a two-part two question, if you will. When it comes to the food, how do you price out a package? And then a lot of our traditional centers, they don't have a full kitchen, okay? Is this something they can create a package from with the limited equipment that you would see in a typical traditional center? Well, you know what, and so I'll answer that second question first. The answer to the second question is yes, you can. You can create a food menu that, that's a package. If you sell on your snack bar, if you sell burgers, hot dogs, wings, nachos, cookies, guess what? You have a package right there. Just, and, and, and so, but here's the key to it. Or, you know, whether you have a small kitchen, a large kitchen, you must know your food costs, right? I mean, that was the key for us. We had to know what our food costs were for almost every event so that we could price it and, and make sure that we're making money. Um, so make sure, and, and, and we all know the challenges right now with food costs, right? They keep going up. So, but once you know, oh, hey, you know what? Uh, I, you know what, gosh, I have uh, pasta, I have garlic bread, and I have salad. Well, guess what? That's a package right there. And it all depends also on portion sizes. And, and, and right there, here's what we did for our portion sizes, right? Your proteins, four to five ounces per, uh, or, uh, per entree, vegetables, starch, salad. You know, folks, you need to know uh, how much a four ounce chicken breast costs you. Uh, you need to know how much of a four ounce piece of beef costs you, how much, you know, three ounces of mashed potatoes costs you. And once you put all that, your food costs should be somewhere in that you know, 25 to 35 percent. 35 percent is high, John, I'll be honest with you, but some centers have to do that. Uh, but if you're in that 25, 30 percent, chances are you, you have a good way to make some money, especially on that food um, you know, menu. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes a little bit of work on the back end. You've got to put this together because as your food costs change, well, guess what? Now your packages can change as well. If your food costs go up by a dollar, well, gosh, your menu uh, package should go up by three or four dollars because right. you have to even that out. Right. Yeah, events, uh, banquets can be very profitable if you do them right. And they can also hurt you if you don't do them right. So you got to do your homework. So thank you for that. All right, we have time for one more question. Um, we had the group event. You know, we marketed it, right? We got them in there. What are some ideas that you can give us to bring them back for another event? and over and over again. Uh, you know, so part of it goes back to what I talked about in part one. You know, some of the things that these companies are looking for is, and, and, and this goes to the end of the event, how easy was it for us? Were all the details taken care of? And John, going back to your point, did you make me look good? I mean, folks, we have to be able to know who that key, key players are because they you know, I mean, their job could be a little bit online because, you know, they've never been to your center. And so one of the things I would tell my staff is, okay, folks, it is our job to make these people look great because if they look great, they're coming back to us. So how easy is it? And then in, in terms of fun, you know, how, or, 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 or how much fun was it? And hopefully at the end of the event, could you go up to your client and, and, and ask for their feedback and, and maybe ask for that, you know, video testimonial. Hey, Bob, you know what? Uh, did you have a great? Oh my gosh, John, we had such a blast here. You guys were great. Hey, Bob, would you be? I, I'm curious. Just take about 15, 20 seconds. Would you be able to just shoot a quick video for us? Say how much you enjoyed this. Sometimes they'll do that, and 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 or and if they do that, you know that that they have a good shot to um, or or to come back. And then you know, and then once they're gone. Make sure you thank them. I mean, I know that, that we all should do that, but sometimes that's common sense, but not so common practice. And maybe you can thank them with a small gift, drop it off at their office, whatever it is. But then here's the other thing is what, you know, say for example, you have a, a, um, a, a, a new item coming to your center. Maybe it's a new laser tag game, or maybe it's a go-kart track or whatever it is, or maybe there's some new menu items that are coming on the menu. Reach out to them and say, you know what, we'd love to have you come back because you're a great customer of ours and we wanna hear from you on what you think of the new menu item, the new arcade game, whatever it is. All of a sudden they're like, wow, we're important. 
um, this is this is pretty cool. They think of us as 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 someone that we can go to. So and and that makes them more or feel more valued and more special, which is the key. And then lastly, um, and and this is out of the box thinking, John. But I'll throw it out there. Uh, and this will also depend on if you have the right equipment. Please make sure you do. But could you bring the bowling to them? Could you go off site and bring a catered meal along with one of those uh, rubber bowling lanes mm-hmm. with the balls and the pins? And you know, you're in a manufacturing warehouse and there's plenty of space or whatever it is. And they're like, wow, I, I never thought we could have bowling here. Thanks. So it's just things like that that when or just when you reach out to them, you're really trying to build that loyalty and ultimately, hopefully you're gonna build that revenue. Uh, that is an out of the box idea. I love it. It, so- it sounds fun. And you know, I, it was a great point too about getting a testimonial. Uh, why not ask? They had a great time. They're more inclined to give it to you at that time. Uh, great idea. And then keeping those lines of communication open so that you're top of mind all the time. Excellent point. Thank you. Bob, thank you so much. Again, your insight thank and your you, expertise uh, in what can be a highly profitable area for our members when they do it upright. Okay. so. If you'd like to learn more about how to build your group events business, or if you want a copy of the BEO that Bob showed, make sure you reach out to Bob directly. If you are ready to start improving your profitability, you can reach us anytime at education at bpaa.com. As we wrap up another edition of The Profit Break, remember that when your focus is on growing people, people will grow your business. This episode, as well as all our previous Profit Break episodes, are available 24-7 for you and your team at bowlinguniversity.net. Plus, new episodes are available every month, so mark your calendar, watch your email, and join us on Facebook to hear about the latest episodes. Until then, I'm John Karabatsis, and do for one what you wish you could do for everyone. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.